Hello everyone, this hour on Verbling, the next in my great short stories series. Today we're going to be working on the very last part of our short story by Rao Dao, the landlady. So in this class we're going to read the very last part, we're almost done, but we're going to read the very last part, summarize what we've learned about the characters and the plot, and we're going to work on some particularly interesting vocabulary because this story is pretty easy to understand. Um, so it's probably a great story that we can learn vocabulary from and we can also get a bit more, because it's easy to relate to, get a bit more context. We can look at when the story was written, we can look at the themes running through the story. So I think we can do a lot more than just understand the text because it's fun easy to understand, and hopefully you've been enjoying it. So that's a little bit about the class. Here's a bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal to bring you this class. By the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. That means Please turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom quiet. Also, tune in to the new words you're learning. Use them as actively as you can so that I can correct you and give you feedback. And finally, open up to your classmates. Just relax and have fun. We're all here to learn and we're all respectful. If not, I'll throw you out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it never comes to that. So let's get started here. Um, we've got Daniel. Welcome back, Daniel. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I, Very good. I look forward to the end of the story. We're going to find out in just a minute. Yes. <laughs> I know the end, but I would like to see the face of the people's face <laughs> with the end. Let, let's find out what happens and also the ending of the story is good because it brings up lots of I think it's good because it brings up some interesting cultural themes yes. uh, running through literature particularly in the UK so it might be good to talk about some other things real things that have happened that are not so different real things. Yeah. Let's, let's say hello to Adam as well. Adam Z. Hello, Adam Z. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm all right. Where are you from, Adam? I'm from Poland. From Poland. Fantastic. Well, Adam, you weren't here in the previous classes, but that's okay. We're going to read the ending of the story, and uh, through the discussion, you'll probably be able to figure out a lot of what's going on. But we did read the story in two previous classes, just so you know. We read part one and part two. Okay? okay. Well, we should have lots of people joining us in just a minute. Uh, there's Igor, and there'll be others as well. So let's do this. I'm going to share my screen. When you open that link that I've given you, this one, I'll put it in the chat window as well. When you open that link, it'll take you to this document. That's our story. And just to get warmed up, I'd like you to go down to where it says vocabulary. So if you click on that <clears throat> on page two, if you click on that link, it brings you all the way down. <coughs> excuse me. It brings you all the way down to page. Let's see what page this is. Sixteen, is it? Seventeen. It brings you down to seventeen. Oh, just forget about these words I put there. They're wrong. Let me get rid of these. This is from another exercise. What I'm going to ask you to do, just to warm up before everyone arrives, I'm going to give you some words. And I want to see if you, based on what you've read, or based on just searching the text, can tell me more or less what they mean. 
So these are all words that you've encountered so far. I'm going to give one to each of you. Um, some of these are easy, some of them are hard. Okay. By the way, if you didn't read the story yet, you can just hit Control F in the document, find a context sentence to help you. So let me give one word to each of you. Um, I'll put the words in the box first. Let me go to the page. Whoops. There we go. So we've got, let's see here. Adam, your word is going to be landing. You're going to see how it's used in the text. You can hit Control F to find this, the exact sentence where it takes place to give you a little bit of context. Um, Daniel, your word is going to be, oops, two, off her rocker. Uh, Igor, your word is going to be off chance here. This is on the off chance, but you're going to do off chance. Um, second here, the next word, pain, spelled P-A-N-E, is going to be for, um, well, Luo, is that you, Luo? Oh, yes, it's me. I'm back. Ah, okay. <laughs> I didn't recognize your picture. So you have changed it. I see that. So your word is going to be pain. If you haven't read the story, just hit Control F and find the context sentence if you can. If you know what the word means, that's okay too. You can just give us your own examples. And Yuki, I've got one for you, which is, uh, let me give you one that's challenging. Uh, give you a challenging one. Yeah. Ah, oh, here's one for you, Yuki. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know this one. Your word is whiff. <laughs> I'm so sorry, teacher. But I teacher. just teacher. I don't see a teacher here. Oh, you mean me, John Eric? Hi, Igor. My name's John. Yeah, Eric. I'm so sorry, John Eric. But yes. I just made a quick search of half chance for the document, and the only instance. I was able to find it's your instance, what you wrote there in the column. Hold on a second. Let me double check. That's weird. Let me double check. Maybe it was written without a hyphen. I see. Yeah. It's written without a hyphen. Sorry. I'll put a hyphen in there so you can. Yeah. There you go. It's there now. <laughs> oh, okay. So listen. This table you have in front of you is just a suggestion, a one way that you can work with vocabulary in a native document. You can find the sentence where it takes place, guess what the word means, compare it to a definition, and then create your own example. So we're going to do this through speaking. I'm not actually going to write all of these. Maybe, maybe Adam, we can do yours as, I'll write that one as an example. Okay? But this is just a suggestion. You could do this in your head. You don't actually have to have a chart and write it all out. This is something you could do when you're just looking at native vocabulary. Or you can create an Excel sheet or a Google spreadsheet and just keep a running list of vocabulary. That's also a great idea. So Adam, did you find an example of landing in the text? Yes. Great. So, a little hard to hear you. Your connection is very, very loud. You're, maybe you need to put on headphones or something. Sounds a little better now. Okay, so, Adam. Uh, no, it's, it's not so good. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll live with it for a moment. Okay, read me your sentence for landing. What did you find? On the second floor landing, she said to him, this floor is mine. Fantastic. I want you to guess what landing means. 
by substituting landing for another word, if you can. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I guess that the landing uh, is a platform between two floors. Fantastic. Platform between two floors. Exactly right. You must be an architect. <laughs> no, I'm not. All right. So your guess and the definition, we don't even have to look it up because that's what the definition is going to say. Uh, maybe I could say, I can add one thing. Platform between two floors. Well, let's say two flights of stairs. Maybe I would just add that. It's usually on the stairs. Okay. And the final column says example. So, Adam, you create your own example talking about your own experience. Try to use landing in your own way. Okay? So, can you think of an example? Are you there, Adam? Yes, I am. So, don't think too much. Just create an example using your own experience. When I was uh, walking to the third floor uh, on the platform, uh, on the landing, there was a flower. There you go. There was a pretty flower. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> Maybe um, we'll say flowers because probably they were in a vase, right? There were pretty flowers that someone had put there to make the building brighter. Maybe someone was conscientious and wanted to make the place look a little more pleasant. Okay, it's good. It works. Very good, very good. I'm just going to ask you to mute your microphone, Adam, because we're getting lots and lots of noise. Thanks. That's great. When you're ready to talk, of course, you can turn it back on. Okay, well, I'm not going to write all of these. Let's do the rest of these orally. So, Daniel, did you find a sentence for off her rocker or off your rocker? Yes. Uh, the landlady appeared to be a slightly off her rocker. Okay. Your guess? Uh, a little bit uh, full or mad. A little bit mad. Mad. Yes. Yeah. Mad yes. or crazy. Yes. Okay. Your definition pretty much matches the real one. We can look it up if you like, but I think you got it. Mad or crazy, mm -hmm. off her rocker. Mm -hmm. Can you think of an example? Could you try to use it about something in your yes. own life? My my old uncle was off her rocker because she usually told us crazy stories. Your uncle was a woman? Uh, aunt, sorry. Ah, okay. <laughs> wow. He really was off his rocker. Aunt. <laughs> he might, so my old aunt was a bit off her rocker because she used to tell me, she used to tell us kids crazy stories. Yes. Sounds good. You know what a rocker is, everyone? What's a rocker? It's a rocking chair. The rocking chair. So if you're off your rocker, you're so deranged, you can't even sit in a rocking chair the right way. You just slide off or something. You're off your rocker, but crazy. Okay, sounds good so far. Igor, off chance. Okay, so I need, uh, I need to read the sentence or something? Sure, unless you have one of your own. Yeah, let's, well, let's find it in the story first. Uh, yeah. Everything is always ready, day and night in this house. Just on the off chance that an accept acceptable young gentleman will come along. So the off chance that an acceptable young gentleman will come along, kind of like you, Billy, right? Isn't that it? She's talking to the she's talking to the kid. <laughs> okay, great. So by guess, I really mean 
substitute off chance with a synonym if you can. Sounds well, like a long shot, like a possibility, but not a really likely one. Okay, so unlikely possibility. Does that sound good? Uh, why not use long shot? <laughs> long shot, because no one will know what it means. <laughs> but yes, you're right. You're right. Because it's too advanced. But you're right. Uh, off chance is a long shot. They're not exactly the same, though. Mm -hmm. um, long shot. Like uh, landing on the asteroid was a long shot. It was not an off chance. It was deliberate. But yeah, it was a like, long shot. A long shot is like you're taking a long shot. And a long shot is unlikely to, to reach its goal, you know? <laughs> reach, reach its target. Yeah, it's sorry. Yeah. Off chance is, is more like random, I guess. Yeah, it's like you're sitting around and just waiting for it to happen. Okay, good, good. So, give us an example. Try to relate your own experience to off chance. Well, I'm, I'm learning English just on the off chance that my English way actually become advanced <laughs> like a native. <laughs> It could happen. It could happen, Igor. Uh, the keyword, it could. Yeah, it could. It's a long shot, but it could happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a long shot. It's inevitable. Why do you, why do you say that? <laughs> because, because your brain is hardwired to learn, and you're already advanced. So it's just a matter of time. I would say by next Tuesday, you'll probably be there. <laughs> Give it a week. Give it about a week. You'll be all right. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Luo. By the way, let's say a quick hello to Tuan, who's joining us right now. Tuan, we're just working on some vocabulary before we read the last part of our short story, just so you know where we are. So, Luo, what about pain in this context? Does that feel well, like I hurt myself? No. Um, in this in this paragraph, I found uh, Billy caught sight of a printed notice propped up against the glass in one of the upper panes. One of the upper panes. Okay. One of the upper panes. So, what's your guess about pain? Pins is a is a squawk scroll um, piece of glass which square. in the window a square yeah which in the window okay a square piece of glass in a window a window pane sounds pretty good so that's pretty concrete but still we can come up with an example too so how would you use it in a sentence okay mm, last year when I Went to the one of the famous church in Italy. I, I, I saw um, I saw many uh, colorful pens on the wall, and they were uh, blink blinking. Yeah. They were blinking. Really? Blinking. Turning on and off. Um, well, uh, that's uh, adjective. I think a little bit exaggerated, but <laughs> um, you mean wait, wait. You mean they were sparkling? Sparkling, yeah, yeah. yeah they sparkling. were sparkling. Okay, that's sparkling. a really good sentence. So I went to a famous church in Italy. I saw, I saw the the colors of the light sparkling in the window pane. Actually, they don't really have square windows, so I don't know if they're panes. Right, because in mm -hmm. the churches, you, I think you're talking about the stained glass. You mean like the images in the glass? Is that what you mean? Yeah, colorful glass, colorful right. glasses. Right, right. So those are not really panes because they're not square. That's okay, the only thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyway, mm -hmm. it's still, it's still, it's still pretty good, good example. But maybe we would just say, like an old. An old house would have window panes, something like that. Okay. All right, sounds good. Okay, Yuki, whiff. There's a word you don't hear every day. Did you find it? Yes, I found it. Uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's the first of the third of, first of the part three, 
uh, okay. sentence is now and again he caught a whiff of, of a particular smell that seems to be seems to emanate uh, directly from her person from from Randu Devi. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So your guess? Uh, I think whiff is uh, uh, same meaning as uh, smell. Swift smell. Okay, good. So that's basically it. Can you use it in a sentence? Uh, uh, sen example. Yeah. 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 Um, as if, uh, as as my wife passed to, as my wife as my wife to walk to past, I I caught a whiff of her perfume. I okay. had a doubt of her. Seeing with another person. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know about the last part, but the first part's okay. I, I caught a whiff. I wonder if my wife is uh, thrifting. <laughs> Listen, you, if you said, my wife walked past and I caught a whiff of Daniel's cologne, then I would be worried. <laughs> if she smelled like Daniel, then I'd be worried. Uh, so okay, but if she smells maybe. like herself, then it's nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a little exercise to give you some ideas about how to work with vocabulary in a non-learning text, in a text that's there for native speakers, like we looked at. Uh, my Say, mother just, the question. Go for it. Okay, so like with, I've never heard it in the, you know, in this, in this meaning like a smell. But I do, I did hear like a whiff of danger, whiff of adventure, like a small sign, something. Could be. Where, where, by the way, where's that noise coming from? Is that Jonathan? Hello, Jonathan. I don't hear Jonathan. Hello, sorry. Oh, you're not Jonathan. Who are you? Uh, my name is Marlene. Yeah, I use my son account. Sorry. Ah, Marlene, you were here before. Uh, yeah, I've been here before. Uh, okay, very good, very good. So, sorry, Igor. Uh, Hello, John. Hello, John. Um, Hello, Luo. Could, could, you, could you unlock the doc documentary so we could uh, put our answer uh, into this sheet? No, I can't. Example. <laughs> oh, sorry. But I cannot because someone will erase it like they always do, so I can't. But you can make a copy in, in Google Drive for yourself. You can just make a copy and you'll have the original and then you can edit it. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, fine. yeah, I think you just go to file and make a copy and then you'll have your own copy of this. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Every time I shared a document and open it up, somebody out there erased it. <laughs> so okay. I, I okay. gave up. I gave up. Because okay. don't forget, you've got all the people on YouTube. Anyone can open this on their computer. That's why I have to be a little careful. Um, Igor, before we move on, we got to start reading if we're going to run out of time. But just quickly, a whiff of danger sounds like a very literary, not very literary, but sounds like a something you would see in fiction. It sounds yeah, a little more. It was in the book I'm reading right now. Ah, okay. So it's a little bit, little bit metaphorical because you're not really smelling anything, but it means like a little bit, just a hint. So you know the word hint, right? Yes, of course. I know. So I think it's the same, a hint of danger, just the feeling or the idea, a small idea, a hint, a whiff. Also, I quickly googled this whiff, and what I got here is like, there's not a politician in the world you could buy a if they got a whiff of it. It's like if they got a hunch that they're good. Uh, right, they're right, good, right. But, but uh, and everybody will know about it, yes? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So whiff is just like the first clue, the first indication, or as you said, the first hunch that something's going on. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, look, I want to definitely read the story. 
So let's jump to part three. And just one thing, because we got some new people before we actually start part three. Can someone give a very, very, very short general summary of the story for Adam, because I think Adam wasn't here. Adam, you didn't read the parts one and two, right? Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, okay. Can someone just give him a sh brief summary? It's got to be short, but a brief summary so he knows more or less what's going on. Can I try? Go for it, yeah. Uh, the protagonist of this, this story is uh, uh, 70 years old uh, young man. His name is Billy. Uh, he came to the. Uh, he came to bus uh, in, in uh, the city of uh, England. Uh, he uh, he, um, he he came here uh, by by train on on business trip. It is his first business trip. Uh, he was asked by uh, his boss in head office in London. Uh, he is so proud of being. Uh, he so so proud of being uh, um, received the mission. Uh, uh, so, so he he wear he he wear new uh, suit and he 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 walked uh, briskly briskly on the street, and and he uh, on the station he asked uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, where and uh, whether um, where uh, the. Uh, he asked if there is a good hotel, a good cheap hotel. He was ans answered. Uh, the porter uh, uh, said that that the Bell and Dragon Hotel is good, and he headed for this hotel. On the on the on the route, he found a, a house. Uh, uh, there on the window, he he found a sign: uh, bed and breakfast. Uh, firstly, he, firstly, he was reluctant to uh, use this this uh, house, uh, but, not, but not a house. It's not a house. It's a house. It's not. It, it's a building. Well, no? it's not a house. It's a. It's, it's a, a little. It's a little inn. Inn. Yeah. He, firstly, he reluctant to stay in in this inn, but suddenly he has a gut. So, so he 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 tried to bell, uh, ring a bell, right? Mm -hmm. Ring the doorbell. Bell. Yeah, ring the doorbell. And as soon as he pushed the bell, uh, soon door 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 opened, and the landlady uh, came out, uh, <laughs> welcomed him. Uh, he he uh, he. he uh, she, 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 tell, she, she, uh, landlady to, told him about, uh, about the reason why, why, why she, uh, selected him as a guest because, uh, she, she just, uh, like, she just, uh, liked him. So, so. She had a good impression, maybe. Yes, she, yes. She has a good impression uh, about him, um, but he, uh, he, uh, he, she asked him to write down uh, hotel books, right? Mm. The guest book. Ah, guest, the guest book. book. Yeah. yeah, guest book. And she found another two names. So uh, before it 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 indicates that before him there are only two guests uh, have stayed in this hotel. He he has remind of he, he has he was he was remind of these names uh, these two names. But oh, he, you, wait, wait. He he remembered hearing the names. He remembered uh, hearing. He remembered hearing the, these names, but he couldn't remember uh, of what what is concretely what 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 these people were. 
So who these people were? <laughs> who who did the people were? Right. Uh, yes. Maybe. And maybe that's where part three that, picks up. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, Adam, that was pretty much <laughs> everything. I hope that was more or less clear. So, it's a little bit like a it's a little bit like a folk tale. We have a person not in the not in the woods like Hansel and Gretel, but something not so similar, uh, or not so different, I meant to say. Well, let's start reading, and then you and Jonathan, if you have questions along the way, feel free to ask, okay, because you were both new. All right? So, Adam, want to take the first paragraph for us here on page 12? Yes. Go for it. Billy started with uh, Secret Christine. She did the same. For half a minute or so, neither of them spoke. But Billy knew that uh, she was looking at him. Her body was half turned toward him, and he could feel her eyes resting on uh, his face, watching him over uh, the rim of her teacup. Now and again, he caught a whiff of peculiar, peculiar, peculiar smell. That Pe peculiar. Peculiar. Peculiar smell that seemed to uh, em emanate Good. Direct, directly from her person. Uh, it was not in the uh, least unpleasant and uh, it reminded him, well, he wasn't quite sure what uh, it reminded him of. He could vol walnuts? Walnuts. 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 Walnuts are those things that you have to crack with a big nutcracker because they're kind of like big nuts with a hard shell. So, pickled walnuts? Pickled walnuts. New leather? Or was it a, a corridors of a hospital? So, Adam, what was unusual about the landlady as he drank his tea with her? What was unusual? Adam? Adam? The smell, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the smell was a bit unusual. She seemed to smell a bit unusual. I agree. Okay. And I, and I think the smell of pick, pickled walnuts is a big, big key to solve this story. <laughs> when we say pickled, what do we normally think of as pickled? Certainly not walnuts. What's normally pickled? What kind of food do you eat that's normally pickled? Pickled uh, cucumber. Cucumber, right. So Some you, people like to eat. <laughs> right. Sour, so pickled cucumber with sour, pepper. right? <laughs> yes. That's it. And peppers and other things, pickled olives, really? I don't know that. Mm. That that must be something you do in Salamanca. Japanese <laughs> like to eat pickled uh, cherry, cherry. Pickled Pick cherries. Uh, maybe. <laughs> so pickled by pickled you mean you put it in in um, in uh, vinegar. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, pickled walnuts seems like a very odd thing to smell. I don't know what that would even smell like. Walnuts are a type of nut, like peanuts, almonds, hazelnuts, walnuts. Don't normally pickle those. Or new leather. Hmm. Well, Daniel, let's find out what happens next. At length, length she said, Mr. Muholland was a right one for his tea. Never in my life have I seen anyone drink as much tea as dear, sweet Mr. Muholland. I supposed he left fairly recently, Billy said. He was still puzzling his head about the two names. He was positive now that he had seen them in the newspaper, in the headlines. Left, she said, arching her brows. Her brows. Her brows. brows. Okay. There you go. 
But my dear boy, he never left. He's still here. Mr. Temple is also here. They're on the fourth floor, both of them together. Mm -hmm. And when did we see them in the guest book? How long ago? Two years ago. Two years ago, and they're still on the fourth floor. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what is, Daniel, what is arching her brows? What part of her body is yes. her brows? The, the, the hair on the hairs in under our, our eyes, no? Under our eyes or over? Over, over, sorry, over. Right, your eyebrows, exactly. Eyebrows. Left, she said arching her eyebrows, so how did she feel when she said left? How did she feel? What's the emotion there? Um, surprise or inc incredible incredulous incredulous good word <laughs> she's surprised or a bit incredulous like i can't believe you would say that <laughs> incredulous all right very good igor next section billy set his cup down slowly on the table and stared at the at this landlady she smiled back at him and then she put one of her white hands and patted him comfortingly on the knee. How old are you, my dear? she asked. Seventeen. Seventeen, she cried. Oh, it's the perfect age. Mr. Malachowland was also seventeen. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like where it's going. <laughs> but I think he was a trifle shorter than you are. Trifle shorter than you are. No, trifle is right. Trifle. Trifle shorter than you are. In fact, I'm sure he was. And, and his teeth weren't quite so white. You have the most beautiful teeth, Mr. Weaver. Did you know that? Uh, One more. They are not as good as they look, Billy said. They've got simply masses of fillings in them at the back. Why do you think <laughs> Billy says that? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I, 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 say look. <laughs> I think uh, I don't really like where it's going. It's like this lady has pickled people there <laughs> to the floor or something. Ah, uh, right. The smell of either leathered or pickled walnuts. Maybe it's pickled, pickled Mr. Mahalan. <laughs> got it. Got it. What is uh, what is meant by a trifle? Do you think? Just a bit. Just a bit. Okay, a trifle shorter. Just a bit shorter. Well, let's see if we've got pickled people. Uh, who's next? Jonathan, are you reading for us today? I don't hear Jonathan. Oh, there he is. Oh, it's not Jonathan. It's Marlene. I keep forgetting. Sorry. I keep forgetting. It. Sorry. Go ahead, Marlene. See where we are? Yep, Mr. Temple. Temple. Of course, Temple. Of course, was a little older. He said, ignoring his re remark, he was actually 28, and yet I never would have guessed it if he oh, okay. he had told me never. Wait, wait, My word wait, 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 there's a comma, so if he had never told me, pause, never my whole life. You have to make the pause there, because there's two ideas. Okay, so told me, never in my whole life, there was no, was a blemish, a ble wasn't, blemish? Wait, wait wasn't, wasn't a blemish? Wasn't a blemish on his body. A what Billy said. He skin was just like a baby. There was pause. There Billy, was a pause. There was a pause. Billy. You say pick it up. Picked up. Picked up. His. 
the uh, tea cup. Yeah, it's two words. Tea cup. Put together. Tea cup. Uh, tea cup and took another another sip on his tea. Then, then he set it down again gently. Says so gently? That's right. Gently. Gently in his saucer. He's waited for her to say something something else. But she's but she said same it? Seed. Seed. Like this. Seed. Seemed, seemed to have lack, lap, 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 okay, into another of her silence. He, sa he sat there is staring straight, straight ahead of him into the far corner of the room. Biting his lower lip. Biting his lower lip. Uh, biting his lower lip. Okay, good. I want to read that again, but a little bit faster, because sometimes when we read slow, it's hard to connect the ideas together. So just listen to that section one more time. Okay. Right? Mr. Temple, of course, was a little older, she said, ignoring his remark. He was actually 28, and yet I would never have guessed it if he hadn't told me. Never in my whole life. There wasn't a blemish on his body. A what? said Billy. His skin was just like a baby's. There was a pause. You can imagine them sitting there without saying anything. There was a pause. Billy picked up his teacup and took another sip of his tea. He sat it down again gently in its saucer. He waited for her to say something else, but she seemed to have lapsed into another one of her silences. He sat there, staring straight ahead of him into the far corner of the room, biting his lower lip. <laughs> Why was he biting his lower lip? This is, this is also an expression. Getting nerves. He's getting nervous. If you bite your lip, you can't speak. <laughs> so maybe he wants yeah. to say something like, hey, where is Mr. Temple or whatever, but he, he's biting his lip. Okay, and there wasn't a blemish. Do you think you could say that with another word? Blemish. There wasn't what on his body? Uh, oh, one at a time. Injury. Injury. Daniel says injury? Yes. You say what, Igor? Uh, anyone can answer. What? Anyone can answer. Man. Stain. Stain. It's just a mark. Like, just a mark on his body. A mark? Yeah, like something that spoiled the appearance of his skin. Got it. And Luo, what were you saying? Well, what I was saying is stain. Stain? Stain? Like a bee stain? Stain. 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 Oh, stain. stain. Got it. Stain. Well, maybe we'd say mark instead of stain, because the stain is like on cloth. Like I spilled the coffee on my shirt and stained it. But your skin is not usually stained. So, a mark. And it could be an injury, or it could just be a freckle or something. Okay. By the way, I'm getting a lot of echo from somebody. Ooh, I don't know who turned their mic off, but thank you. <laughs> All right. And there's this wonderful silence because she starts to talk about a blemish on his body. How would she know what his body looked like? She's just the landlady. Well, we're going to find out. So, Luo, can you take... Uh, you're going to take this section here on the bottom of 13. See it? No, yeah, yes, I see. Go for it. That, okay. That parrot, he said at last. You know something? 
It had me completely fooled when I first saw it through the window. I could have swore it was alive. Alas, no longer. It's most terribly clever the way it's been done, he said. It doesn't look in the least bit dead. Who did it? I did. You did? You of did? Of course. <laughs> look at the emphasis on you. You did? You did? Of course, she said. And have you met my little Basil as well? She nodded toward the dachshund curled up so comfortably in front of the fire. Billy looked at it, and suddenly he realized that this animal had all the time been just as silent and motionless as the parrot. He put out a hand and touched it gently on the top of its bank. The bank was hard and cold, and when he pushed the hair to one side with his fingers, he could see the skin underneath, grayish, gray, grayish, grayish blank and dry and perfectly preserved. Wow. <laughs> so, what does that make you think? So. What happened to the bird and the dog? Just to be clear, Luo. Uh, sorry, I concentrate uh, uh, and uh, and uh, on reading, so <laughs> I didn't think uh, through of all of this uh, nines. Uh oh. oh. Well. Class, what happened to the bird and the dog? I mm -hmm. think uh, uh, that Sunday is already dead. And yep. he he remained there uh, and um, uh, 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 they, uh, he 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 remained there um, uh, um, uh, moving. So it mean, it means that he, <laughs> he he's like uh, it it's like a doll, <laughs> like a doll. In yes. fact, it's called taxidermy. Ah, yes, taxidermy. Taxidermy, yes, yes. The art of preserving animals, keeping them in your room. <laughs> what a terrible... <laughs> that terrible... Yeah. Okay, Yuki, let's take it, I think, until... I think it's... I think Dando, Dando did it. Uh, stuffed the duck's hand. Yeah? She stuffed her dog. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> yeah, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take Good. us to the end, Yuki. Okay, good gra gracious me, he said. How absolutely fascinating. He turned away from the dog and started with, the, with deep ad admiration. Ad admiration. Admiration. Admi admiration at the little woman beside him on the sofa. It must be most awful difficult to do things like that. Not in the in the least, she she said. I stuff all my little pets myself <laughs> when they pass away. What awful hobby she has. Will you have another cup of tea? No, thank you. No, thank you, Billy said. That the tea tasted faintly of bitter almonds, and he didn't much care for it. You did sign the book, didn't didn't you? Oh yes, that's good. Be because later on, if it, if we, I happen to forget what you were called, then I could always al always come down here and look it up. I still do that almost every day with my miss with Mister Maholand and Mister Mister Temple. Billy said, Gregory Temple. Ex Excuse my asking, but haven't haven't there been any other guests here except them in the last two or three years? Holding her teacup high in one hand, in inclining her head slightly to the left, she looked up at him out of the corners of he of her eyes, and gave him another gentle little smile. No, my dear. She said, only you. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Sounds ominous. 
very mysterious last uh, yes, ending. <laughs> okay. Is it all? It is it is it all of the story? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's mysterious. Because I'm looking at the original text and it ends with No my dear, she said only you. So yes, that's the end of the short story. It seems like a story will continue, yeah? Well, I'm sure it does, just not on this page. I'm sure it continues in our imaginations. Well, the what happens? <laughs> I think we, I, I have an impression from this story that it, this is it is one kind of hard boiled, hard boiled genre. Hard boiled yeah. what? Hard boiled. This uh, this is a novel of uh, on the field of hard boiled. Well, that would be like a detective story, though, like like Mike Hammer, the Mike Hammer yeah. stories. But why do you say that? Because hard boiled is like the tough guy detective. He's hard boiled. He's tough as nails. I mean, the hard boiled story uh, makes us imagination, makes us think between lines. Yeah. Hard boiled, like this. Hard -boiled. Look at like this in the child window. Hard, huh? uh, sorry, hard body. Uh, hard. Uh, uh, ha uh, no, no, sorry. Hard. Mm, ha, hard. Mm, yes. Hard. <laughs> ha, um, um, I, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. But look it up and then come back to us later. <laughs> I don't, I don't know sorry, what it means. Okay. <laughs> you I mean. He's trying to say hard body. Hard body? I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that. But look, we could say it's an open ending. That's a good way to describe the ending. Because it doesn't really come to a conclusion, but we can fill in the blanks. So, Daniel, you were the first to comment on the ending. Uh, what do you think about the ending? You said you wanted to wait to see what everyone else reacted to it. What's your reaction, Daniel? Uh, I like this kind of story. Because you can imagine what will happen. <laughs> I think the, the tea taste bitter because of the poison. Yeah, what poison tastes like almonds? Uh, there's something that you always uh, see in movies. Uh, what is it? Mm. It's like, well, anyway, yeah, yeah. I, there's always something they say tastes like almonds. I don't remember what. It, oh, wasn't it a? Uh, what did Socrates have to drink? When he when Socrates died, he drank what? Does anyone remember? No. I what did what did he did he say that it tasted like almonds? He was describing the the poison. Yeah. I said it's a it, it's a key of uh, understanding this story. Uh, everyone everyone who who like uh, uh, detective uh, novel know that that uh, almond. Uh, smell of almond is uh, mm, it, it related to the uh, cy cyanide. Cyanide, that's yes. it. Yeah, cyanide yeah, yeah, yeah. is uh, <laughs> poison. Yeah. <laughs> often uh, that is often used for killing person. Yeah. Yeah, or or maybe a parrot and a dachshund. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The first time I read this story, <laughs> I, I, I remember that, yes, it, it is related to cyanide. So, so I support these two persons, two people uh, who, who, have left, who have stayed before in this uh, inn has, mm -hmm. been, has been killed. Yeah, because she says by they're this, still upstairs. Yes, <laughs> by this upstairs. landowner, a land, landlady. He possibly, they are also stuffed. <laughs> and maybe somewhere in this house, they are deserved. <laughs> there. Should we get... Does this remind you of a certain Alfred Hitchcock movie? Yes, as if they were. Yes. The <laughs> Another? Like. 
<laughs> the music in the shower. Um, this is a good story because uh, it, it's short, it, we fill in the blanks, and it's very amusing because we can see exactly what he's getting at. But it has something to do with British culture because there are many famous stories in Victorian England about poisonings. But it is not the story of uh, Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie's story is uh, all, uh, uh, all mystery has been solved in the end of the story. Yeah? Right. Yeah, but <laughs> this story, uh, and, um, real mystery remains, uh, make, remains, remains mystery. Yeah? <laughs> so, so we have to think about it for, for, for ourselves by imagination. That's a big reference, uh, um, big reference from uh, that, uh, that of Agatha Christie. So it's not really a detective story, it doesn't really come together, but the joke is that we can fit, we know exactly. Let me put it this way How would you describe the narrator in this story? We have first person. Rarely we have a second person, but usually we have a third person. So first person and third person narrator. Then we have a narrator whose thoughts we get to know, and a narrator whose thoughts we are privileged to. We call those omniscient. How would you describe the narrator? By the way, I'm talking to all of you. How would you describe the narrator of this story? Who is the narrator? It was a bad guy talking about <laughs> bad things. <laughs> Bad guy talking about bad things. Narrator describe this story from the view of uh, this this guy Bill, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think narrator's view is same as Bill's view. View. So we basically get to know Billy's thoughts. So yes, I think so. Kind of, so it's I think they call that third person with a first person feeling, or there's yes, some yes, term yes. for that. So. Okay. So actually, there are only two characters, yeah, including narrator in this story. That makes us um, um, worried about the story. Yeah. Do are we in a special? By the way, I have to end the class in just a second, so we can talk about this more on Thursday. But just to, before I go, do we know more than that, the narrator? Do we know more than? Does the narrator know more than Billy? Do we know more than the narrator? Is is that is this part of the effect of the story? Because I think no more, no more. Because one thing that's interesting is that Billy's seventeen, and immediately you feel sorry for Billy because he seems like he just doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> He's so excited about people walking briskly and wearing suits yeah. that you immediately feel sorry for him. So, by the end of the story, not by the end, by the beginning of the uh, the time he meets the the lady, um, it seems like I feel like I know more than Billy does, and he just begins to figure it out with the dachshund. But he's still too polite to leave. He doesn't he doesn't think about the 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 tea. He just thinks, oh, that tastes terrible. <laughs> but in the end of the story, he is on the verge of danger. He might be killed. He might be. Yeah. Well, we have to stop there because I have to begin the next class right now. So I'm going to go. But I'm going to leave you uh, after class with something to read to follow up a little bit about Victorian culture that I think that Raoul Dowd was making fun of. So after the classes today, I'll add it and I'll send you a link to read about something about Victorian England. I'll be back in just a minute for the business class where we're going to be working on our big case study for entrepreneurship. So come back for that in just a minute. Bye for now, everyone. Talk to you soon. Don't drink the, don't drink the almond tea.